when we come into the house of God, amen, and we're ready to give the devil a black eye, amen, hallelujah, so let's go ahead and open up the service and dedicate it unto the Lord, amen, heavenly father, we just come before you right now in the name of Jesus, God, asking you, Lord God, that you baptize us, Lord God, with that holy fire, God, and that you, Lord God, would bless your people that are here in this upper room, God, we thank you, Lord God, for gathering us here today, Lord God, and for you making a way where there was no way, God, we pray for healing, God, we pray for restoration, God, we ask you, Lord God, to have your way in this place, in Jesus' mighty name, name where family says, amen, amen, come on, church, give it up for Jesus one more time. Take a seat, amen, in the presence of the Lord, amen? amen? What a beautiful presence of the Lord here today. We want to welcome everybody once again. Uh, all you visitors, welcome to our Wednesday night service, amen? I hope you enjoyed tonight. Uh, we got something in store for you, amen? Right now, before we get started, we're going to go ahead with our June announcements, amen? First and foremost, if you can uh, please put your cell phones on uh, silent, please. Amen. You don't want to turn it off. Sometimes we need our phones for certain things. Amen. Um, the month of June. Everybody knows what time it is. Come on, man. Make some noise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. On June the 12th at our Chino Hills our Mother Church, we're going to have our men's discipleship. Amen. It's going to be at 6 p.m. Amen. How many of us know when us men get together, we go make some noise. Amen. The devil runs scared. Amen. Because... We go to fight, amen. Living Word is a ministry, hallelujah, that doesn't give up, amen. That doesn't give in, amen. We continue to fight, amen. Let's give Jesus one more big round of applause. Hallelujah. On June the 19th, amen, Sunday is our Father's Day service, amen. Let's give it up for the dads, amen. If you want to invite, invite a dad. Invite an uncle, invite a cousin, whoever's a father, invite them out to our service, amen, so they can be fed with the word of God, amen. How many of us know that it's important for the fathers to be in church on Sunday, amen, amen, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Also, we got some good news, amen, it just announced, I believe, we got our Living Word Conference building, amen, let's give it up for Jesus. It's going to be in the city of Pasadena, amen. It's going to be at uh, Sierra Monte Boulevard in Pasadena. Whoever's not familiar with the, with the area, amen. Let Jesus be your compass, amen. You could go on to your map quest, amen, and just make your way out there, amen. The first day is going to be on the 17th at 6 p.m., one hour before for prayer, amen. The next following two days, amen, are going to be the evening at 6 p.m., Amen for prayer. Amen. 10 a.m. in the morning. Amen. And let's get ready. How many of us know that when the conferences happen, amen, we make some noise. Amen. Wherever we go. Amen. The devil gets shut down. Amen. We go to just have a, a, a good time. Amen. 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 So let's give it up for Jesus one more time. And also just a quick reminder. We're going to be serving too, amen. We're going to be out there. We might be asked to serve for one day, I believe, uh, in the children's ministry. Get ready. We might be working the parking lots. But how many of us know that the Lord's work is always good? Amen. So let's give it up for Jesus one more time. And also, we just like to remind everybody um, on our Sunday service, um, starts at 1030, amen. Come out. You know, Sundays are, are, are important, amen. We have to remember that that's a Sabbath day, amen, and we want to keep it holy, amen. amen. So just keep inviting somebody out. And with that said, you know what time it is. It's time to give back to the Lord and call up Brother Anthony, amen. 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 God bless. Hallelujah. How many of us are excited today? Amen. 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 We just say Jesus real fast. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I don't know about you, but Monday I look forward to, to Wednesday service. Amen? Amen. I feel good in this house. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. So today, uh, before we get started, I'd like to call our ushers up. And we have three ways to give today. We have to wear Zell app, our living with the upland checks, and we have to wear tithing envelopes. And just a show of hands, if anybody needs a tithing envelope. <coughs> Good. 
All right, let's get started. Now, how many of us know that we are blessed? Yes. Amen. 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 With everything that we have, the food that we drink, or the food that we drink, the food that we drink, and the water that we eat. Amen. Amen. Yeah, we, we, with everything that he gives us, with everything that he gives us, we are so blessed. Amen. And everything comes from his hands. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And we always need to acknowledge this. Amen. 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 Our God is good. Sometimes we get caught up in thinking that, our hard work earned it, but the word of God says that he gives us the ability to earn our wealth. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now, he blessed us with a scripture just to remind us of the 2 Corinthians 9.10. It says right here, God gives seed to the farmer and food to those who need to eat. God will also give you seed and multiply it. In your lives, he will increase the things you do that have, that have his approval. Amen? Amen. See, we got to remember, we're giving to a God that makes things happen. We serve a moving, a working God, nonstop, that's always doing good things in our lives. Amen. See, when we give to something good in His eyes, He will bless us double. Come on. Amen. 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 Our God is good. We got to remember, I know we go through seasons, church. We go through seasons. Believe me, I know. All right? But just remember the lady that gave her two last buffalo coins. And Jesus said, this poor widow gave everything. So that we should have no excuse. Never to give back to the Lord who loves us unconditionally. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, my God, for another day. If you could just rise, just draw me in reverence for the Lord over the tithes and offerings. Dear Heavenly Father, my God, today, my Lord, we confess what our mouth and believe in our hearts that you are Lord, my God. My Lord, right now, I ask that you anoint this gathering, my God. We ask that you open our minds, open our ears, my God. We ask that you give us a vision, my God, to what is right, my God. Not what the world says is right, but what you say is right, my God. My Lord, I ask that you cover my brothers and sisters with your peace, my God, that you give, my Lord. My God, release them of anything that any stronghold, my God. I ask everything that we give to you today, my God, be dedicated to you, the one who gives all, my God, and keeps on giving, my God. My Lord, my God, you're good, my God. You're so good, my Lord. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' my name, we pray. Amen. 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 Let's, we're going to go ahead and dismiss our ushers this evening. Let's give a clap offering to the Lord again. Amen. How many are excited to be in the house of God today? Amen. How many can be excited? I don't know about you, but uh, I, I'm excited. Amen. But we're going to go ahead and dismiss our children tonight. And uh, um, we're going to, let me see. Yeah, we can be seated right now in the presence of the Lord because we are going to do our study class tonight. How many are excited for our growing healthy? Amen. How many want to grow healthy tonight? Amen. I don't know about you, but uh, I, I want to grow healthy. But how many of us understand that we need to grow healthy in the Lord as well? Amen. And uh, we're starting on our second, our second part of our growing class. But before we move on, I want to ask by the show of hands, how many are excited for the conference tonight? Yes. Okay, um, I mean, really, if you've never been to a conference, I encourage you to come out to the conference because 11 years ago when I came out to my first conference, it's what basically said that I needed to grab onto what I needed to get a hold of this. And uh, God began to do work in my life, and the conference is where it actually happened. Yeah. But not only that, you know, where we going to be at in Pasadena, we already got all with all our churches, but, you know, I want to encourage the church. And I'm going to tell you right now, if you're ready to give towards the conference, put a pledge up, okay? And when I tell with the pledge, I'm not saying use your tidy money and put it all, I'm putting it to the pledge. <laughs> I already spoke up for us. I was at a meeting on Sunday. $2,000 is what we're sending to the conference, okay? With you or without you, you know, I just want you to understand that it's a good place to start sewing, amen? You know, we're having three conferences at one shot. We're having Southern California, 
North, uh, Northern California and Central California. The three are going at the same time. Like I said, there's three days out of the week. We're going to be working, and I think we put ourselves for three days, you know, on there. Um, but just get excited, man. Amen. Get excited. You know, people, are, you're going to be able to see getting saved. I don't know about you. Maybe get saved again. Amen. Uh, some of us need a double dunking of the Holy Ghost. Could I get an amen? But, uh, yeah, $2,000. It's coming up pretty fast. You want to see, Pastor, I want to give 100 you know, here for the... For the conference, cool, you know, whatever you want to give, maybe $50, maybe someone say, well, I can do $25. You'd be surprised, $25 can go a long way, amen? Yes. But just, you know, get on that, remember, and don't understand, don't try to take it off your title, I'll just do it this way, amen? No. Don't do that, but just be faithful, you know, be faithful to it. And uh, believe me, God's going to bless you. How many want to be blessed? Amen. I mean, only a few of you. If you don't want to be blessed, man, I'll take your blessings too then. You shoot them to my way, man. Amen. But uh, if you have your books tonight, we're going to go ahead and continue with the second part of it. And I don't know about these, these this course right here. Uh, you know, like I said, it is college credited. Um... It's a course that, that, you know, it's something that you're going to get a certificate at the end of it. Amen. And uh, I, I don't know anything that I can get closer and intimate with God. For me, it's good. Can I get an amen? amen. So, you know, if, if we're studying today, we're going to go ahead and start on page nine. And the new topic is going to be talked about saved by grace. Amen. amen. How many of us know that that's how we're saved? Amen. Amen. Like a lot of us, I, I says, yeah, I know that, that uh, you know, I always say, Pastor, I know Pastor is good looking, but that's not what saved me, amen? <laughs> right? You know, that's not, it was only by the grace of God and the love that he had for us, amen? That's the only way, but you see, I want to kind of do a little introduction on the study before we do the study that we're talking about saved by grace, meaning grace alone and faith alone, Amen? It's not about what you're doing because, you know, we can all think we're good people. But according to my Bible, it says that we always fall short of the glory and we're always falling short. Amen. Amen. You know, so so we got to understand that it's not our good deeds that are going to get us saved. Amen. But it's what Jesus Christ did on that cross Amen. is the true reason why we're being saved. Amen. Amen. But God's word says that we are saved by grace through faith. So in other words, we've been talking about faith not too long ago. That It's going to take faith in order for us to believe the word of God. Can I get an amen? amen? So in other words, that if God's word says that we are saved by grace through faith in Christ Jesus and not by our own efforts or works. You can read Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. Meaning that grace alone and faith alone. Amen. What does grace alone mean? I'm glad you all asked. It means that God loves. How many of us know that he loved us? Amen. That's why he gave us this grace in our life that he gave us his only begotten son. God loves us. God loves us so much that he forgives us. Amen. And he saves us not because of who we are or what we do, but because of the work of Christ. Amen. Our best effort can never be enough to earn salvation. Meaning no matter what you do, it's not the reason why you're going to be saved. Amen. You could think you're all Mr. Mr. or Mrs. Goody Two-Shoes, but that's not the reason that you're going to be saved. Amen. Hate to burst your bubble. But it's God declares our righteous for Christ's sake. Amen. We receive that grace through faith alone. Meaning that we have to believe in the son for what the son did for us on that cross. God even gives us the faith that trusts him. We are not saved by obeying a list to do's and don'ts. But by grace through faith in Christ. Amen. Our salvation is in God's hands. That's the good news of the gospel. Our response to God's grace is con the cornerstone of our life together as Christians. Meaning that today you are free from sin. Oh, come on. That's a good news, right? 
You are free from sin. Now get this one, okay? That doesn't mean they're not free to sin, amen? Oh, yeah, nobody clapped on that one, amen? That means you are free from sin, right? You are uh, you already broke out of that captivity, amen? But you're not free to keep doing that sin. Understand that. Two different ones, amen? The Bible says that if you repent and ask God for forgiveness, that means to turn away from what you shouldn't be doing. Simple as that. If not, then you're not free from the sin. We are invited to live out our faith with painful hearts, eager to share the gospel with each other. Hallelujah. Praise God. Jesus. Well, we started here, saved by grace. So that was my little introduction. Is it pretty good? Yes. Amen. Amen. I studied that one hard. Amen. But saved by grace, it's something good that shows us how love really, God, how, how God really loves us. Amen. You see, and, and if you have your books right now, if you go to number one, and if you're taking notes, you can take notes as well. That's no problem. But number one, it gives us our key, our kind of our key verse. What is sin? Amen. 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 I kind of did my own little illustration. What is sin? What is sin and why do people sin? Because it's our nature. We are born into a sinful nature. Amen. But understanding that this sin will take us away from the love of God. Because in, in, in Proverbs, I believe it's in Proverbs or, uh, wait a minute, I don't even know the scripture. I don't know what I'm saying. But it talks about that God despises sin. Yes. But tonight, I want to talk about what is sin. And it talks about James in James 4.17. And that way we can get our first answer. <laughs> In James 4, 17, it talks, and I'm going to go ahead and read it. If you guys don't have your, your Bible with you, and you can just take the, and, and it's right beside there. You guys could look it up afterwards, but I'm going to go ahead and give you the answers with it. And uh, I know that we're kind of trying to move in it fast because it is, we're trying to do it all in six weeks. I might need to add an extra week on it, but um, we're doing it every Wednesday night. And... Um, just get ready to write them, amen? And I might be going too fast, but it's all right, amen? amen? You could always look it up on the video. It's on YouTube and Facebook as well. On James 4, 17, and these answers basically are coming from the Bible of the New King James Version, okay? So I put out all the scriptures on it. It says, therefore, to him who knows to do good and does not do it, to him... It is sin. So number one, it says, what is sin? I'm going to give you the answer right now. It's to know the right thing. And not do it. Meaning, going against God's will. That is sin. Going against God's will. Meaning, it's to know the right thing. And not do it. And then you can put a period and then write this going against God's will. Amen. Meaning that God has a will and a purpose for your life. Amen. And when we don't do the right thing. Amen. That is not God's will for your life. That's number one. That's when we begin to sin. Meaning it doesn't mean that we can go out and do whatever we want to do. And, and, and when we know we shouldn't be doing it, that's when we begin to start sinning against what God has for our life. Number two, what is the result of sin? Oh, hallelujah. Let's read Ephesians 2.1. And did she get my answers through the book? It says, and you, he made alive. Who were dead in the trespasses and sins. Meaning what is the result of sin? You're going to be spiritual dead. Put spiritual death on it. 
So the result of sin is going to get us spiritually dead. Meaning that we're not responding to the Spirit of God. And what it says that our price for it, it's going to just make us spiritually dead. Amen? You see, the word dead means spiritually dead. One that is dead in the Spirit has no communications with God. He or she is separated from God. Many of us, when we start understanding that we need to be on that right path with God and what he has called us to do. But many of us, because of what we do against what God's will is for our life, will keep us there hostage where we won't be able to receive what God wants to bless us. How many believe that God wants to bless you tonight? Amen. Hallelujah, I'm at the right church. If not, I was going to go minister to them. To take my book and go minister somewhere else, amen? amen. But you got to understand that if we're spiritually dead, we're not even going to be able to communicate with God and we're not going to understand Him. That's what happens. Many of us that are walking in sin, we just can't hear His voice. Number three says... Is there anyone who has not sinned? Let's read Romans 3.23. Yes, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Amen. Meaning, you can put the answer there, no. But Jesus has not sinned. Jesus. Yes. There is, is there anyone who has not sinned? But according to Romans 3.23, talking about us, about us, we the ones that fall short of the glory. Of course, we know Jesus walked in the right path. Amen. Amen. He's the only one. That's why we are saved through by him. Amen. Hallelujah. For what he did on that cross. But is there anyone who has not sinned besides Jesus, if you want to put it that way? No. Nope. Amen. I, I sure hope not. You know, I, I think we all do. Amen. But let's go to number four. What about good moral people? Are they an exception? No. Hallelujah. No. Romans 3.10 reads like this. As it is written, there is no none righteous, no, not one. That means no, no one is an exception, amen? amen? Meaning that if you felt that way, that you thought that, okay, I'm, well, I'm good. I don't do bad things, amen? amen? I might not even say a bad word in my vocabulary, amen? amen. That means that you wouldn't need what Jesus did on that cross. So, uh, hallelujah, Lord, I have sinned, I fall short of the glory, amen, and I accept it. It can be by an attitude or a thought process, thinking about somebody else. You already sinned. And that's what we have to understand, that the only one that walked righteous in this world was Jesus Christ. Can I get an amen? Amen. So, the word moral means decent, honest, ethical, honorable, honorable, and good. Just being a good person doesn't mean you get into heaven. That's right. And I'm not saying, you know, there's some good people out there that we start to grab it. Yeah, of course. But there's still little issues in our life. Amen? Amen. Meaning stay humble. Amen? Amen? And then we move on to number five. Who alone knows the truth about the human heart? Jeremiah 17, 9 through 10 says, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? And then it goes like this. I, the Lord, search the heart and I test the mind, even to give every man according to his ways, According to the fruit of his doings. So if you read again. Who alone knows the truth about the human heart? The Lord. The Lord. Man I got a good class. 
I'm going to give you guys a name. Amen? Hey, hey, maybe an A minus, right? I don't want to be so just giving out A's, okay? Maybe when we're, I'll see you at the end when we're at, in the finish of this course. Amen? But in number six, it says, if we say we have no sin, what are we doing to ourselves? We're deceiving ourselves. We're deceiving ourselves. Good, that's a good answer. First John 1 John 1.8, it says like this. Therefore was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God. For no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Yes. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter in a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered again, Most assuredly I say unto you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is the flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is the Spirit. Do not marvel that I have said to you, you must be born again. The winds blow where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. Amen? Amen. So number eight says, What did Jesus tell Nicodemus? The religious leader of the Jews, in no doubt of a very good moral religion man, he must do to what he must do to enter heaven. Oh, number seven, yeah. Or number six. Oh, number six. Okay, my bad. Sorry. Sorry. I was just seeing who's paying attention, okay? Yeah, I'm glad that the students are paying attention, amen? Let's go back. Let's rewind it. Chuchas, rewind it. Do a rewind real fast. Okay, number six. If we say we have no sin, what are we doing to ourselves? Deceiving ourselves. So you can put as your answer, we are fooling ourselves. We are fooling ourselves and the truth is not in us. Amen. If you want to add a little extra to it. So why did Jesus tell Nicodemus, the religion's leader of the Jew again? And no doubt a very good man, moral religion and man. He must do to enter heaven. He told Nicodemus that he must be born again. Hallelujah. Man. Amen. Number eight. How can a part of a person, how can a, my Spanish is coming out, sorry, okay? How can a person be born again? Let's read John 3, 15, 16. It says that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So how can a person be born again? By believing in what Jesus Christ did on that cross. Amen. By believing in the son that that's our true way of our salvation. Amen. Meaning that there is no other way that we can enter the kingdom of heaven. Not our works, our deeds, or whatever we're going to do. It's not what's going to save us. It. It's what Jesus Christ did on that cross when we believe that we died for our sins. That's how we're saved. Could I get an amen? amen. So how can a person be born again? By believing in Jesus. Amen. amen. Born again means receiving a new life. Born again of the Holy Spirit into the family of God. Born again describes the action of God's Spirit takes when transform, transforming lives happen. Could I get an amen? amen? That means when you're born again, you're not the same person no more. 
Tell your neighbor that old man is dead. And the new is here. Amen. The new and approved because I'm reborn again. Oh, hallelujah. Clap for Jesus. Amen. So now we're at number nine. What are the wages of sin again? Okay. Romans 6.23 reads like this. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. And then we're going to number 10. If we're all sinners, how do we know God really loves us? Let's read Romans. What is it? He said his only son died. Okay, Romans 5 8 said, But God demonstrates his own love towards us. And that while we are we're still sinners, Christ died for us. So if we're all sinners, how do we know God really loves us? Because he sent his son to die for us. Jesus, amen? Yeah. Or yeah, yeah, Jesus in Romans 5, 8. And then number 11. So for number 10 to be put, he said. Yeah, because he sent his son to die for us. And then you can put in parentheses, Jesus. And number 11, for what purpose did Christ come into save this the world? To save, 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 save the sinners, yes. But 1 Timothy 1.5 reads like this. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance that Christ Jesus came into this world to save sinners of who I am chief. Amen? Good. Let's move on. We're on number 12, guys. Number 12 says, For what purpose did Christ die on the cross? Yeah, right here. Uh, 1 Peter 2.24 reads like this, Who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree that we having died to sins, might live for righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. Yes. Meaning, he died so we can be dead to sins and live for what is right. Amen? Amen. That's the answer. So again, he died so we can be dead to sins and live for what is right. And number 13, what must I do to be saved from the penalty of sin? Repent. 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 John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So you must believe in Christ, what he did on that cross. Amen. Number 14 says, if we confess and repent of our sins, what, what will Jesus do for us? Forgive us. That's right. Forgive us is one and cleanse us from every sin. First John 1 John 1.9 says, if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So he forgives us and cleanses us from every sin. And then number 15. According to John 1.12, what happens to a person who receives Jesus Christ? Yes. Okay, so John 1.12 reads like this. But as many as received him... To them he gave the right to become children of God to those who believe in his name. So, according to John 1.12, what happens to a person who receives Jesus Christ? That person becomes a child of God. 
a child of God. So grace is a God-giving give that we don't deserve. The word grace means undeserving love and kindness of God towards man. And woman, okay? Can't leave you guys out, but that's what it is. It's, it's grace, you know. It's that he holds back that mercy, amen, of things that we do deserve. But it's by grace, amen, of things that we don't deserve, amen? Jesus. No, we did 16 or 8. Oh, okay, let's go back. Rewind again. 16. When should we seek salvation? Daily. How? Daily. Daily, that's right. Right now, today is the day that the Lord has me. So, 2 Corinthians 6, 1 and 2 says... We then, as workers together with him, also plead with you not to receive the grace of God in vain. For he says, amen? amen. Don't take it in vain. But that's the answer. The answer for number six is right now, today is the day. Number, one, number, number 16. 16. All right. That wasn't for day? Day? Yeah, to, right now and today is the day. Right now. So now we're in 18, right? 17. 17. Oh. Why can I get to heaven? Why can't I get to heaven by doing just good works? Because, okay, let me see. 17 says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Why can I get to heaven by doing just good works? Because it's by grace, not by good works. It's a gift of God. That's the answer. Now I can go to the little commentary. Grace is a God-given gift that we don't deserve. The word grace means undeserving love. In kindness of good towards men. Amen. Number 18. How can you know you have eternal life? Number 18, it says in 1 John 5, 13. These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God. That you may know that you have eternal life. And that you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. So how can you know you have eternal life if you believe in the Son of God and by the Word? Amen? That's the answer. If you believe in the Son of God and by the Word. Num number 19. Are you a Son of God now or when you die or when you die and go to heaven? Yes, that's right. 1 John 3, 2 says, Beloved, now we are children of God, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. But we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Amen? Amen. Verse, now let's go to number 20. How can I know I am saved from the penalty of sin? Roman 8, 16 says the spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. So how can I know that I am saved from the penalty of sin? The Holy Spirit, that's the answer. The Holy Spirit speaks to us deep in our hearts and tells us we are God's children. Number 21 says, what happens when we are born again and become Christians? Yes. Yeah, we're, we're, we're new creation. We become a new creation. That's the, the, the answer. Number 21 says, 
Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All Amen. things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Amen? Amen. Amen. Oh, come on, let's give that one for Amen. Jesus. Amen. Amen? In other words, if you want to be a creature or whatever, that's cool, but you're a new creation. Amen? Yes, be a new creature. Jesus. A good one, finally. Amen? But only through what Jesus Christ did. Amen? Amen. And then Romans 10, 13. It says, number 22, how can, who can have this born again experience? Anyone who calls on the Lord. 22 says, for whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Number 23. Who can separate your love from God? No one. That's right. Romans 8, 38 through 39 says, For I am pers persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor heights, nor death, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. So nothing or no one. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. You see, a Christian is one that is born of God. Not of blood, but a heredity. Heredity. I, I, I can't see that word, sorry. But of good birth. Amen. Not of the will of the flesh, culture, and education. Not of the will of a man, prestige, or influence, but of God by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let's go to number 24. What do I know? What do I now possess as a Christian? Number 24. It says in 2 Corinthians 6.18, I will be a father to you. And you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. So what do I now possess as a Christian being a son or a daughter of the Lord? Is that what be the answer? Yeah, being a son and or a daughter of the Lord. That's what we possess. We're children of God, yes. Being a child of God. Number 25, how should a Christian think? Christ-like, Christ Jesus. Amen, that's good, that's good. But let's read uh, Philippians 4.8. In Philippians 4.8 says, Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, Whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue, and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Jesus. So how should a Christian think? Thoughts that are true, honorable, and right. Amen? We're almost done, guys. Number 26. Is anything that's true, honorable? Yeah, anything that is true. true. Okay, we should, thoughts that are true, honorable, and right. Here we go. What is the inward evidence that I am a born again Christian? That's a good answer. When we love our brothers and sisters, amen. First John 3, 14 reads like this. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love the brethren who has does not who who he who does not love his brothers abides in death. Jesus. What is it? Love your brothers. Love your brothers and sisters, amen. Pray for them. 
Number 27. What assurance do I have that I can live and enjoy the Christian life? Let's read Philippians 4.13. That's our, our actual title here. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So what assurance do I have that I can live and enjoy the Christian life? We have the, the assurance of knowing we can do all things through Christ who, who strengthens us. Amen. Amen. Starting to stutter. <laughs> Verse 20 or number 28. What place should Christ have in your life? Amen. Number one. He should have first place in our lives. That's the answer. Let's read Exodus 20, 30. It says, you shall have no other gods before me. And then number 29. What will be rewarded for the following, for following Jesus in, the, in this world and in the world to come? Eternal life. Amen. Eternal life. But let's read Mark 28, 30. It says, let house or brothers or sisters or fathers or mothers or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospels who shall receive a hundredfold now in this time houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecution and in the age to come eternal life. So what will be rewarded for the follow, following Jesus in this world? The answer is now God's going to give us a hundred times over in the world to come. We will have eternal everlasting life. Amen. Yes. So again, now God's going to give us a hundred times over. And in the world to come, we will have eternal, everlasting life. How can I apply this to my life? You can write a little, little bullets for you. And then we're going to end with Ephesians 2, 8. Amen? It says, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourself. It is a gift of God. Amen? Amen. Let's give it up for the Lord tonight, amen, for this second one. Remember, next Wednesday, we'll be doing our third one, amen, and we're going to be talking about the Holy Spirit next Wednesday. But tonight, let's just go ahead and stand up right now. I'm going to go ahead and say the sinner's prayer because I believe that we should all be seeing this, amen. I believe that God gives us the opportunity to get ourselves right, you know, tonight, amen, and, and you know, we need to ask God for forgiveness, amen, amen. and that if, um, not only for the forgiveness, you know, but also, you know, it's something that we should be carrying with our spirit, because if the Bible says that we fall short of the glory, amen. 